can't thank you enough, God. We can't praise you enough, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They taught me something when I was small, and they said that if all the ocean were ink and all the sky were paper, it still wouldn't be enough to tell of the goodness of Jesus. Because every time you're thinking for one thing, he's going ahead and he's doing another thing. You can't be God given no matter how hard you try. So let's thank him in advance. Hallelujah. Let's praise him in advance. God is worthy. God is worthy. Hallelujah. Even when you don't feel like it, sometimes you gotta press. Hallelujah. You gotta press your way through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. This is not for show. This is not for fashion. But we serve the highest God. We serve a God that's high and holy. That looks down, hallelujah, upon us and blesses us, oh God. Even when we don't deserve it, God said, we give you glory. We give you honor. Everything that's within me, God, we praise you. Hallelujah. Every breath in my body, I praise you. Hallelujah. 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 We have so much to thank God for. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Good morning. Look across the aisles and say good morning to someone. Hallelujah. That you may not have seen all week long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a great God. We serve a great God. Y'all ready to give God some praise? Are y'all ready to give God some praise? Hallelujah. Are you ready to give God some praise? If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands like this.
Amen. Come on, let's celebrate this great God who has been so great and so powerful to us. This is Lord's Supper Day as we come to remember our Lord's death, his suffering until he comes again. What a privilege it is for us to take part in this ceremonial meal. Uh, would you help me welcome all those who are joining us online, our Facebook and our YouTube audience. We are honored by your presence. I want to give you a moment uh, to grab what you can in your home, something to eat, uh, something to drink, uh, as we celebrate this cere ceremonial meal together. On the last night that Jesus spent with his disciples, he said to them that he would suffer at the hands of evil men and that he would ultimately be put to death. He told them that he wanted to share that meal with them one last time, but the next time he would share that meal with them will be when we're all together in the Father's kingdom. Wish I had some folks who were more excited about being together in the Father's kingdom. I thought about that thing recently, Sister Iris, that when we all get in the presence of God, every nationality, every race from every quadrant of the globe will all be in the presence of God, magnifying Him in our own way, lifting Him up in our own way. But thank God that when our worship is for real, that He receives what we offer unto Him. And for that, we give him praise. But just as there are great promises concerning this meal, there are also some warnings. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, there were members at the church at Corinth who were showing up simply to eat and simply to drink. And as a consequence of their mishandling this meal, some of them became sick, some became weak, and many of them even died. And we don't want any of those things to be true of us today. We want to go to God in prayer to make certain that the lines are clean, that he might hear and answer us and fellowship with us as we fellowship with him. As we all stand, let's pray together. Lord, we are thankful for this day, for this privilege to be able to call on your name to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for this opportunity to remember your suffering and your dying until you come again. You promised in your word that if we would confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. We call on you to do it today, to do it even now. Make us worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. We're standing all over the room in just uh, a moment. All three sections will move at the same time. Uh, those to my right, starting from the rear, will come down this aisle. You'll receive right up front. Go back to your seat and we'll move up from there. Uh, those in this section, which aisle are they coming down? Those in this section will come down this aisle. You'll receive right up front. Go back to your seat, we'll move up from there. Those in this section, uh, starting from the rear, will come down this aisle. You'll receive right up front. Go back to your seat, we'll move up from there. As you reach into these trays, there are two cups. One cup sitting on top of another one. Make sure that you grab both cups. Hold on to it when you go back to your seat. We're going to eat and drink together. Amen. We're moving now.
This is our Lord's body which was broken for many. Take, eat ye all of it, and think on things above. This is our Lord's blood which was shed for the taking away of sin. Take, drink ye all of it, and think on things above. said, how many glad that you're still here today, huh? Somebody laid down last night, wasn't able to get up like you and I today. Somebody was laying in a hospital bed, but they're standing here right here in the sanctuary today. Y'all are crazy today, huh? Hasn't been that you've been so good and that you thought you were right. What nothing but his grace and mercy that allowed us to see this day. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it, y'all. Well, I could have been dead. Sleeping in some lonely grave, but God's grace and mercy kept me. I had to take so many 
But I thank the Lord I'm here Disappointments, yeah I had so many disappointments But I'm still here Through it all, y'all Through it all I made it through Another day's journey God kept me Let me tell you what it was, y'all listen. It's by the grace of God that we're still here today. He was always there, no matter what came my way. A baby prayers in hell in my time of need. Guess what, y'all? Standing right beside Kenny. Just to see about me, oh, I made it through another day's journey. God kept me here. Can I get a witness to him? Tell somebody, oh, I made it through another day's journey. God kept me Faith to know today, I made it. I made it. Oh Lord, yes I made it. I'm still here. I'm still here. See many of my friends said I wouldn't be here today, but thank God, God I made it. By the grace of God, yes I made it. I'm still here. I'm still here. Can I get a witness today? I'm so glad the Lord kept it all wrapped around me. I made it. Oh, Lord. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. I'm still here. Somebody just like me today. I don't have a mind of God, but thank God I made it. Oh, Lord. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. I'm still here. So many times. Your hand, tell him I made it, I made it, I made it. I made it. Oh, Lord, yes, I made it. I'm still here. I'm still here. I don't know about you, but I thank the Lord I'm still here today. I made it. Tears in my eyes. Yes, I made it. Sometimes I felt like it. But I know we didn't bring me this far to leave me alone. Oh, I made it, I made it. I made it. Tell your neighbor. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. I'm still here. Come on and wave your hand. Tell them I made it, I made it, I made it. I made it. Oh, no. The world know that God been good to you. Oh, I made it. Oh, Lord. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. I'm still here. One more time, y'all. Come on and tell it. I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. Oh, yeah. Yes, I made it. I got a witness right here. I'm still here. Brother Clark and tell you. I made it, I made it, I made it, I made it. Got another witness right here. Dick and Charlie can tell you. Got another witness in the back. Brother Alvin can tell you. Oh, I made it. Got another.
the wind is. Yes, I the battle can tell you. I still hear. Got another witness over here. Sister the Janice can tell you. Got another witness, y'all. My wife can tell you. Is anybody here glad today? You ought to tell somebody. I By the grace of God, we still here. Come on and wave your hand. I made it, I made it, I made it. I made it. Oh, Lord. Yes, I made it. Tell him one more time. I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. Oh, Lord. Yes, I made I'm still here. I'm still here. Do it all, y'all. Do it all. I'm still here. Still here. I'm still here. 2021, we still here. Still here. Still here. Oh, yeah. He keeps on making a way out of the way. Is anybody here glad about it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The road got rough, still and the going got tough, oh, but I'm still here. Oh, yeah. Sometimes my body oh, get racking with pain. Sometimes I feel like giving up. But how many know you been praying and if I believe you? soul and all that is within me bless his holy name would you help me celebrate God for just being God then help me thank God for this awesome music ministry all these wonderful folks who have blessed us in song we are honored 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 again we welcome all those who are joining us uh, from home uh, as well as those who are joining us in person. Uh, for those who are in the building at the bottom of the card that you were given on your way in, there uh, is a connection uh, section on one side, and you can connect with this church officially simply by filling out that card, dropping it in the offering plate on the way out, 
On the back side of that card is a prayer request form. You can fill that out uh, and submit your prayer request, and we will be earnestly praying for you. Uh, we honor God for our folks who are away. Uh, we pray with them. We pray for them uh, that the Lord will continue to add uh, strength and victory to them. Uh, glad to see Sister Reeves and Sister Fort uh, in church. Praise God. They have, uh, they have gone through a lot of loss and transition. But thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. That whatever we lose on this side, we find on the other side. And we get to see them again. And for that, we are thankful. Would you help me celebrate God for all the staff members and volunteers of our church? You all do so much. We could not do what we do uh, without you. I am uh, beyond thankful. Uh, we are collecting school supplies. Our kids go back uh, on the 10th of this month, and we're collecting school supplies. We're doing it a little differently from normal. Uh, normally, uh, we do uh, backpacks. But this year we decided that uh, we are adopting four local schools. Uh, I contacted one of our school board members uh, and they gave me the most uh, at risk or in need schools uh, because some children won't be able to go out and purchase all the school supplies uh, that the system recommends and the teachers uh, need things on hand to be able to help those who weren't able uh, to do uh, what was necessary. So uh, throughout uh, the month of August, we'll be collecting school supplies. You can bring those, and uh, those four schools, we made contact with them. They gave us a wish list of everything that they needed, and I'm sure that whatever you bring uh, will be on the list. So I encourage you, please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, to do that. Pray for Minister Susan Lawson. Her brother went home to be with the Lord this past week, and our prayers uh, are with her uh, and her family. Stand with me, please, as we honor the reading of the Lord's Word. I want to do a couple of other things before we get uh, into the text. Uh, one of them is, if you're sharing with us as a guest, would you please raise your hand nice and high? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's give our guests a rousing round of applause. Amen. Uh, to welcome them the Faith Church way in Jesus' name. We are honored by your presence and we uh, look forward uh, to sharing with you uh, in the future. And then baby girl all the way from Albuquerque, New Mexico uh, is in church this morning. You celebrate you being here. Kayla, thank God for safe travels uh, and the Lord bringing you in. Uh, Exodus chapter 18, I want to begin in verse 8. I want to read through verse uh, 9, then I'm going to drop down to verse 13 and read through verse 17. Now, some of you are looking at, the, in the building, are looking at the printed outline, and you think we're going to be here all day. We are not, because the Lord's willing this is going to be part one and part two. I just want to put it all on one uh, page so you could have it, because some of y'all were getting nervous. They say that uh, Reb done lost all track of time, but uh, uh, no, I, I think we'll be all right. And we so funny, we don't say none of that at the comedy club. We don't say that at the movies. Let them cut that movie off before that thing is over, boy, we'll, we'll show out. We don't say it when we go out to eat. It's just turning, we don't say it in any other place. But saints get it. And y'all so funny. Y'all funny. For real. I've been watching y'all for 23, 25 years. And y'all were looking, I just, I got going to say it. Y'all will sometimes, not sometimes, y'all will look so ready to go. Y'all will look so ready to go. And then I look out in the parking lot, y'all still out there. I'd be like, we could have went. Oh, no. <laughs> I guess that's a part of the church experience is what happens in the parking lot. <laughs> Praise be unto God. 
Exodus chapter 18, verse 8 through verse 9. I'm reading from the Message Bible, verse 8 through verse 9, and then we'll pick up at verse 13 through verse 17. Let's read together verse 8 through verse 9. Moses told his father-in-law the story of all that God had done to Pharaoh and Egypt in helping Israel. All the trouble they had experienced on the journey and how God had delivered them. This is Moses talking to his father-in-law, not his uh, father outlaw, his father-in-law. Some folks got some outlaws instead of in-laws. But Moses is sharing with his father-in-law Jethro, who was a priest uh, in a land called Midian. He's telling him how good God had been. Watch Jethro's response in verse 9. Jethro was delighted in all the good that God had done for Israel in delivering them from Egyptian oppression. So Moses in verse 8 talks about how good God had been, uh, and Jethro agrees in verse 9. But watch what happens when you get to verse 13. The next day, Moses took his place to judge the people. People were standing before him all day long from morning to night. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, what's going on here? Why are you doing all this and all by yourself, letting everybody line up before you from morning to night? Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me with questions about God. When something comes up, they come to me. I judge between a man and his neighbor and teach them God's laws and instructions. Here's verse 17. Moses' father-in-law said, this is no way to go about it. I want you to turn to your neighbor and shout to them as safely as you can. Let it go. It's bothering your peace. Got a neighbor on the other side. Shout to them. Let it go. It's bothering your peace. Amen. You may be seated in the Lord's presence. That's what I want to talk about. Uh, Lord's willing this morning and next Sunday morning. Let it go. It's bothering your peace. Sometimes people will invite you to go somewhere or invite you to do something and you tell them you can't go because you're busy. Then they will ask you the next day, what did you do? And your response is nothing. And you said, well, you told me that you were going to be busy. Yes, I was busy doing nothing. And what you were inviting me to do was going to interfere with the peace that God has given me. Uh, Exodus chapter 18 can really be divided into three different pieces. Uh, in verse 1 through verse 12, you find the first piece. It is the success of Moses. The success of Moses. You find that in verse 1 through verse 12, the success of Moses. We aren't going to read all of the verses, uh, but beginning in verse 9 down through verse 11, I do want to highlight Moses' success or, or the success of Moses in those verses. Look again in verse 9. Jethro was delighted in all the good that God had done for Israel in delivering them from Egyptian oppression. Jethro said, blessed be God who has delivered you from the power of Egypt and Pharaoh, who has delivered his people from the oppression of Egypt. Now I know that God is greater than all gods because he's done this to all those who treated Israel Arrogantly, This is Jethro celebrating the success of Moses. That's what you find in verse 1 through verse 12, the success of Moses. But then the second thing you find is in verse 13 down through verse 23. 
And it is not the success of Moses, but it is the surveying of Jethro. That is, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, uh, came to see how Moses spent his day. He performed a survey. Another word for survey would be examination. He smoked him over. He checked him out. He peeped his whole call. He checked him out. Like some of y'all do with people you run into. You, 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 you check them out. I've had folks who joined our church in law enforcement and say, uh, Pastor, uh, don't take this the wrong way, but we did a background check on you before we start visiting your church. <laughs> and here's what they say. Here's what, this, this true for God. If they were here this morning, they, they, they would tell you. They said, Pastor, with all the people we checked on to find out uh, things about you, we couldn't get anybody to say anything bad. And so, Tiana, you know what I thought immediately? They didn't ask the right people. Because <laughs> there's some haters. Drunk on haterade. Everybody don't like you. <laughs> and everybody don't like me. Lord knows that's it. It is all right with me. I don't have to be liked by everybody. Watch the surveying of Jethro. It's in verse uh, uh, 13 through verse 23, I just want to highlight verse 14 through verse 17. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, remember, the people lined up from morning until evening. Uh, Moses had led more than 2 million people out of Egyptian oppression on their way to the land of promise. Can you imagine one man dealing with two million people with all kinds of problems? Uh, they had civil matters between each other. Then they had spiritual matters between God and themselves. And Moses uh, sat all day long from morning until evening to hear whatever their issues were. Were. His father-in-law said to him uh, in verse 14, what he saw all that he was doing for the people. He said, what's going on here? Why are you doing all this and all by yourself letting everybody line up before you from morning to night? Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me with questions about God. When something comes up, they come to me. I judge between a man and his neighbor and teach them God's laws and instructions. Moses' father-in-law said, this is no way to go about it. That's the surveying of Jethro. It's in verse 13 through verse 23. Jethro said, let me check you out. Let me see what you're doing. And immediately, without any requests from Moses, Jethro immediately gave him a report and told him that this is not what you should be doing. The surveying of Jethro. So in verse 1 through verse 12, you find the success of Moses. In verse 13 through verse 23, you find the surveying of Jethro, but then in verse 24 through verse 27, you find the, watch this, the survival of Moses and his people. The survival of Moses and his people, which means uh, when Moses decided to take Jethro's advice, it saved Moses and it saved the people. And one of the things I want to touch on during this two-part series is that some of the people you are wearing yourself out in order to please are actually suffering because you are doing for them what they should be able to do for themselves. 
You watch them fold all their clothes while they're home, then they go off to college and, and, and don't know what a washing machine is. You, 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 you do all the cooking throughout their childhood, never bring them into the kitchen, then they get grown, invite you over for Thanksgiving dinner, you cut into the turkey, and it's got a whole bag of stuff up in there. They tell you they're going to make the macaroni and cheese, and they bring out craft squares. They tell you they're going to make the banana pudding and they come with jello pudding. Some stuff you just <laughs> Somebody say, Pastor, don't hate on the way I make my uh, <laughs> nana pudding. What, what, watch, verse, watch verse 24. Verse 24 says, Moses listened to the counsel of his father-in-law and did everything he said, that's the survival of Moses. Uh, and because Moses did what his father-in-law said, it saved Moses and it saved the people. His father-in-law said, whether you know it or not, Momo, <laughs> some stuff you need to learn how to let go because it's bothering your peace. And as quiet as it is kept, Moses didn't even know how much it was bothering his peace, but Jethro did. Which means even successful people need to be surveyed if they are going to survive. You missed it. You missed how I hooked all three of them up. That was good. Because first thing I told you, in 1 through 12, the success of Moses, 13 through 23, the surveying of Jethro, 24 through 27, the survival of Moses and his people. Hook them together. Even successful people like Moses need to be surveyed by somebody like Jethro if they are going to survive. Let that sink in. Because some of us think we know everything and can't nobody tell us nothing. And when somebody tries to tell us something, we reject the infant. We say, I didn't ask you. To I didn't ask you for no advice on, on how to do this. But sometimes truth and wisdom can come from even the smallest voice. And I want to walk through that whole concept as we spend this time together over the next two Sundays. Even successful people need to be surveyed if they're going to survive. Which means you ought to have someone in your life that you can talk with about what you're doing and let them survey you to help you determine if you're doing it the wrong way. Which actually leads me to the first major point that I want to share from verse 13 through verse 17. It is this. He was doing the right thing the wrong way. He was doing the right thing the wrong way. Hey, in verse 13 through verse 17, Jethro does not say to Moses that what is being done is wrong. He just said, Moses, you're doing it the wrong way. Uh, Co Coach Greg, uh, every year when I served as a youth uh, minister at my home church, we would uh, take a trip every summer to South Florida, uh, and I was responsible for planning the trip. I had to uh, make all the reservations for the hotel rooms. I had to reserve any rental vehicles that we needed. The church also had its own vans. Uh, and one of the things, bro, Cody, that, that I would always do is I would always, and it was a frustration for me, uh, I would always reserve the back seat of the 15-passenger van 
for all of our luggage. Well, as the youth ministry grew from year to year, the luggage was taking up more and more space. So I sat down with my pastor and I said, uh, Dr. Lattimore, uh, everything is fine with the reservations. We're fine with the transportation, uh, but we're getting a little cramped by all the luggage that's filling up the back seat. I said, we're having to put it on the floor uh, underneath the other seat so that when people sit down, their feet are on top of the luggage. You know what he said, Deacon James? He said, Minister Thor, have you thought about renting a U-Haul trailer, hooking it to the van, and put all the luggage in the trailer so the people can ride in the van and the luggage can ride in the trailer. You don't need air-conditioned luggage. But you do need air-conditioned people. You know why that was so mesmerizing to me? Because in my own family, we had never rented a U-Haul. My dad had a pickup truck. Anytime he needed to pick something up, he just put it in the truck. And if the truck wasn't available, if we bought a mattress, we'd buy it, put it on top of the car, strap it down. Each of us ran an arm out the window, held on to it. I, 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 I didn't have, Sister Marcella, U-Haul exposure until I talked to somebody who had uh, been where I was trying to go and who had done what I was trying to do. And they told me that I was doing the right thing. I was just doing it the wrong way. And what is it in your life you tripping over? Because you need a spiritual U-Haul instead of packing it on the inside of whatever you've been trying to carry it in. He was doing the right thing the wrong way. All right, that's number one. Here's number two. Not only was he doing the right thing the wrong way, but number two, he was doing the right thing with the wrong people. He was doing the right thing with the wrong people. Look at what you find beginning in verse 17. Here's the advice that his father-in-law gave him. It is very detailed advice. I, I love this. It begins in verse 17. Uh, it ends in verse 27. I absolutely love this. Watch verse 17. Moses' father-in-law said, this is no way to go about it. You will burn out and the people right along with you. This is way too much for you. You can't do this alone. Now listen to me. Let me tell you how to do this so that God will be in this with you. Be there for the people before God, but let the matters of concern be presented to God. Your job is to teach them the rules and instructions to show them how to live and what to do. And then, you need to keep a sharp eye out for competent men, men who fear God, men of integrity, men who are incorruptible. That means they won't take a bribe or they won't take a shortcut. And appoint them as leaders over groups organized by thousands, by hundreds, by 50, and by tens. They'll be responsible for the everyday work of judging among the people. They'll bring the hard cases to you. But in the routine cases, they'll be the judges. They will share your load and that will make it easier for you. If you handle the work this way, you'll have the strength to carry out whatever God commands you and the people in their settings will flourish also. Moses listened to the counsel of his father-in-law and did everything he said. That's where some of us would have missed it right there. 
Some of us would have said, Jethro, I don't know if I like you all that much. No, how? And I don't know if I'm going to listen to anything you said, and I sure ain't going to listen to everything that you said. Not so with Moses. He listened to him, and he did everything that he said. Moses picked competent men from all Israel, verse 25 says, and set them as leaders over the people who were organized by thousand, by hundred, by fifty, and by ten. They took over the everyday work of judging among the people. They brought the hard cases to Moses, but in the routine cases, they were the judge or they were the judges. He was doing the right thing. He just was doing it with the wrong people, which means he wasn't allowing others to help him to get the job done. But watch verse 27. I love verse 27. Then Moses said goodbye to his father-in-law Jethro, who went home to his own country. Don't miss that. That's for some mamas and daddies who are working harder to help take care of your grandkids than your kids are to take care of their own kids. After Jethro gave Moses advice, And after Moses followed Jethro's advice, Jethro went all the way back home to his own country. And sometimes you got to learn, sometimes the reasons people don't want to come to you for advice is because you want to micromanage everything. You you, want to stay around and, and watch them. You teach them how to wash dishes, then you want to stand over them while they wash them. And here's what you say, because I want to make sure they wash the dishes right. I don't want them to miss anything or leave anything on a plate. I don't want a grain of rice uh, left uh, in a fork. Let me share something with you for free. That grain of rice ain't going to kill you. You remember when you used to drink water out of water hose? We done got so solidified now, everybody drinking bottled water and filtered water. I used to drink water out the water hose and considered it a luxury. If you ain't never had water hose water. <laughs> For Harry, am I telling the truth? If they ain't never had water hose, you missing something. If, if, if you never had a 99 degree day, With a 25 foot water hose (laughs) and let all that good water seasoning. (laughs) It's that water flows through the hose. Somebody at home ought to type in the chat. I know that's right. I know that's right. Ain't nothing like a water hose. Ain't nothing like a water hose. You're missing out on something. Some some folks are so busy tripping over making sure that all the towels are folded the same way, placed in the, uh, wherever you put them the same way, instead of just celebrating the fact that they folded. Somebody say, I can hear you, I can hear you right now in the spirit. Y'all so loud, you don't even know it, you're so loud. See that, Pastor, you done lost me because I got to have all my stuff done a certain way. Pastor, I don't let the kids put up the groceries because I need all my cans turned a certain way. I need all of them arranged a certain way. God sent me by here to tell you, boo, let it go. It's bothering your peace. You are frustrated and don't even know it. Hey, first major thing in the text. He was doing the right thing the wrong way. Second thing, he was doing the right thing with the wrong people. Here's the last thing. It was bothering his peace. See, it it, would have been all right if what he was doing 
with the wrong people wasn't hurting anybody. But the truth is, he was hurting himself and hurting the people who were around him. I love the way the text lays this out. Watch verse 18. Here's what his father-in-law said to him in verse, verse 18 to tell him why he needed to change his ways. Verse 18, he said to him, you'll burn out and the people right along with you. This is way too much for you. You can't do this alone. Watch verse 22 down through verse 24. He says, they'll be responsible for the everyday work of judging among the people. They'll bring the hard cases to you. But in the routine cases, they'll be the judges. They will share your load and that will make it easier for you. If you handle the work this way, you'll have the strength to carry out whatever God commands you and the people in their settings will flourish also. Moses listened to the counsel of his father-in-law and did everything he said. Uh, that, that first major point, uh, he was uh, doing the right thing the wrong way. You know what that means, Sister Deshauna? That every now and then, this is not a part of your printed outline, every now and then you need to perform a recalibration. A recalibration. That, that, that means you need to examine your practices and procedures. Because just because you've been doing something a long time doesn't mean you've been doing it the right way. And sometimes we need a recalibration. I shared with you all before about this lady uh, who was cooking dinner uh, for her family. It was Thanksgiving dinner uh, for her family. Uh, and whenever she would go into the store and buy a ham, she would bring the ham home, take an electric knife, cut the ham in half, put each piece of the ham in a separate baking pan, and then she would put it in the oven. She had done it that way all of her life. So her husband asked her one day, baby, why you cut the ham in half and cook it in two separate pans? She said, to be honest with you, I don't really know. But that's how my mama did it. So mama came over later on for dinner. And they said, uh, mama, why is it that in our family we take our hams and cut them in half, put one half in one pan, the other half in another pan, and then put both pans uh, in the oven? Mama say, be honest with you, I don't really know. I do it that way because that's how I saw your grandmama doing it. Grandmama comes over for dinner. They say, Grandma, why is it that in our family we take the ham, cut it in half, and put it in two different pans and put both pans in the oven? Grandma say, I don't cook my hams like that no more. She said, when I was coming along, we were so poor, we only had one pan. It was only big enough for half of the ham, but now that I done made it to the big leagues, getting my turn at bat. <laughs> Wish I had somebody with a Jefferson spirit. We moving on up. She said, I got a pan now big enough for the whole ham. And every now and then you need to perform a recalibration. Because just because you've been doing it a long time doesn't mean you're doing it the right way. And I ain't done, but all the people say it, amen. Hey, so every now and then you need to perform a calibration. That ties with point one. He was doing the right thing the wrong way. Uh, here's what ties with point two. He was doing the right thing with the wrong people. Not only do you need a recalibration, you need to learn something about delegation. You can't do it all. That's why God surrounds you with people in order to help you get the job done. Then the fact that he was, it was bothering his peace 
means that not only do you need a recalibration, and not only do you need to perform some delegation, but you need some revelation. Hey, because here's the interesting thing about this, and I'll get to this part next week. Uh, it was bothering his peace, but he couldn't see it. Nobody said anything about it, and he didn't even notice it. He was too close to it to see it. Nobody said anything about it, and he didn't even notice it. And some of the stuff you're doing, you've been doing it so long, it doesn't even phase you anymore. When the truth is, you are shaving off your own productivity and missing out on you becoming the best you and you are missing out on developing the people who are around you because if you do everything, nobody else gets a chance to learn anything. So you need a recalibration. You need to learn something about delegation and then you need a revelation. Hey, in, in, in Mark chapter 4, I'm headed to my seat. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus uh, got in a boat with his disciples. And the Bible says that Jesus went to the back of the boat and went to sleep on a pillow. That means he didn't fall asleep like some of us do at a red light. Jesus went to sleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> Some of us grew up, I didn't, but I've seen this happen. Uh, so, so some people grew up not sleeping in a bed, but sleeping on what your people call a pallet. Oh, oh, oh okay, we, we, we bad and bougie in the end of the day. You, 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 oh, okay, I, I knew somebody in here knew about sleeping on the floor. So, so, somebody in here know about one person sleeping up at the top of the bed, cross this way. Three folks sleeping, cross this way. One or two down at the bottom. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. But now that you done made it to the big league, you act like you can't even take a nap. Unless you got memory foam. So Jesus didn't fall asleep. He went to sleep. Because the Bible says he had his head on a cushion. That means he was sleeping on purpose. Storm breaks out. Boat starts filling with water. The disciples come to him and they wake him up. I would have woken him up too. But I, I hope I would not have said to him what they said to him. They said to Jesus in Mark 4, do you care? That we are about to drown. And Jesus got up, wiped the sleep out of his eyes, and shouted, Peace! Be still. And immediately the wind ceased, and the waves laid down like a sleepy dog. Then Jesus turned to them. He didn't ask them why they were fearful. He said, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no the reason Jesus questioned their faith is because when he got in the boat with them, he said, let us go to the other side. And when they woke him up, they hadn't made it to the other side yet. And Jesus said, why did you ask me about you dying when what I promised you has not come into fruition yet? What Jesus was saying is stop focusing on what you see and learn how to focus on what you heard me say. That's the problem with a whole lot of us. We're looking for a sign instead of listening for a word. And as soon as Jesus gets to Mark 5, Caleb, there are two men who were living in a cemetery full of demons and nobody could control them. When you read it in all the narratives of the New Testament, before Jesus could even get out of the boat, he was commanding the demons to come out of them. Which means 
The reason Jesus was sleeping on the trip is because of the work he had to do when he got to the shore. And if Jesus had lost all of his energy during the storm, he would have not reserved any energy to cast out the demons when he got to the shore. You didn't hear me. Because you shout differently when you hear me. Jesus, the disciples are pulling their hair out on the journey. When Jesus said, I'm going to rest during the journey because what's ahead of me is bigger than what's behind me. And the reason you need to stop allowing things to rob your peace is because you don't know what mountain God is about to bring to you that you're going to need the strength to climb. That's why some of us keep repeating the same grade spiritually. God is ready for you to be in a Ph.D. program spiritually and you still in pre-K. Because you wasting all of your energy fighting things that don't even matter. Jesus said in John's Gospel chapter 14 verse 27. As he was preparing to leave his disciples. He said to them in the King James Version, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus came to give you peace. Hey, can I share this with you for free? The peace that Jesus came to give you is free for you to receive. But it cost him everything in order to provide. <laughs> That's what went on at Calvary. He purchased peace on our behalf. In the Old Testament, Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. But with his stripes, we are healed. Which means, why are you trying to figure it out? And God has already worked it out. God's word to somebody this morning, let it go. It's bothering your peace. And you're going to need that peace down the road. Because there is something that God is waiting to do with you, for you, and through you. But you got to get out of pre-K. Because them little demons you fighting. God got, all demons ain't the same. If you read your Bible, all demons ain't the same. And God got some big demons for you to fight. And you got to stop fighting these little, bro, Cody. It used to bother me when people said negative things about me. I've been involved in the political spectrum running for office, and if you want to determine whether or not you got thick skin, just put yourself out there publicly. Because you will find out that people you thought were your friends were really your enemies in disguise. And it, it, it taught me some stuff over the years. I learned how to hear and don't hear. How to see and don't see. Why? Because peace is expensive. I'm done. I'm done. Oh, uh, I, I, I grew up watching westerns, uh, cowboys and Indians. Cowboys had Six shooting pistols. That means six bullets in each gun. And he carried rifles. Six shooters. Rifles. My nephew and I grew up playing in the yard, shooting at each other. And we didn't say pow. We said pew. 
Because that's the sound that the guns made when we watched it. Pew! Pew, pew! Pew, pew! Pew! We shot at each other. That's if we were the cowboy. Indians didn't have six shooters and rifles. Indian, Indians had arrows and tomahawks. I was watching a Western, uh, R R R Jeff, and the, 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 the cowboys were fighting the Indians, and the Indians were shooting at the cowboys, and every now and then they'd hit one. And the Indians were shooting back uh, at the cowboys with their arrows, and every now and then they'd hit one. But then there was a twist in the story. The cowboys traveled in a caravan of horses and wagons. In the wagons were their women and children and their supplies. The Indians discovered if you took one arrow, you could kill one cowboy. But in the movie I was watching, Rick, they started taking the arrows, and instead of aiming the arrows at the cowboys, they set the arrow on fire and shot the arrow into the cowboy's wagon and set the wagon on fire because the Indians discovered that the cowboys couldn't fight the fire and fight them at the same time. Saints don't know when to shout. And what the enemy is doing in your life that keeps you so frustrated is he keeps setting little things on fire, little things on fire, little things on fire, little things on fire. And you're so busy trying to fight the fire until you're not fighting who your real enemy is. That's why you got grown people sleeping in the same bed not speaking to each other. Because of something somebody else said. That's a fire. And the real enemy you done let into your house disrupting your peace when the reality is you got to learn how to let it go. Learn how to let it go. Some of you remember the movie Frozen. We're standing because you really know we're going when you stand. One of the highlight songs in the movie Frozen was Let It Go. I would sing it, let it go, let it go, let it go. How many of y'all remember the movie Frozen? Let it go, let it go. Let it go. What her name was, Elsa? Elsa say, let it go, let it go, let it go. Maybe Frozen is a little too new for you. Can I go back a little further and catch you? You might not know Elsa and Frozen. But you do know Teddy Pendergrass. <laughs> Teddy Pendergrass say, I think I better let it go. <laughs> Looks like another love. Y'all ain't been saved all y'all like. Don't take, don't, don't take the damn it. Don't, 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 don't. Don't make me. You see the kind of, you see what I got to deal with? You see y'all about to push me over the head. I'm trying not to go there. Oh, I'm so close. I pull y'all straight out the spirit into the flesh. Let it go. It's bothering your peace. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. That the Lord will bring you to a place of recalibration. A place of delegation. A place of revelation so that you can see what God is saying and see what he is up to. There's some of you in this room, you don't have a relationship with God, you need to get one, and you can do that today. I wanna to lead you in prayer, and you can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. You can connect with this local church officially 
today. I share it with you. You can do that on the card that you have. Those who are watching from home, there's a jot form pinned in the comments. You can fill that form out and connect with this church online. I encourage you to do that. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. Father, thank you for revelation. Lead us in delegation. Guide us through recalibration. Help us to do better and learn to let things go so that it does not rob us of our peace. Now, Lord, I pray for those who do not know you, those who have never said an eternal yes to you. I pray, Lord, that today your spirit will attack their spirit and they will let go and let you have your way. Then, Lord, I pray for those who need a church home, that if you're leading them to connect with this local church in person or from home, that you would move them to be obedient to your voice, to let go of apprehensions, to let go of concerns, and do what you're calling them to do. Lord, help us all to recognize that what we may be in may be pre preparing us for what is to come. Help us to reserve our spiritual strength, our spiritual enemy, spiritual energy to fight the real enemy so that we will not be sidetracked by things that try to take our peace. Thank you for loving us enough, for sending us your son. Thank you for loving us enough to give your very life. As we leave this place, we ask you to watch over us, guide us, protect us, hold us in the palm of your hand. As we give, we ask that you continue to take our gifts, use them to be a blessing to those who are around us. We thank you for it even now. In Jesus' name, amen. You ought to give God a rousing round of applause, rousing round of applause. High five somebody in the spirit and tell them I'm gonna let it go, I'm gonna let it go, I'm gonna let it go, I'm gonna let it go.